What is up, weather enthusiasts? I'm your host, Pat's Path Predictor. Let's get right into the weather. All right, so this is the situation we have right here. We once again still have those two areas of interests uh, out in the Atlantic Ocean we have right here. We have one out the coast of Africa right here, off uh, one of which, uh, at least one section, I think at least, is off the Cabo Verde Islands, just off the coast right there. And another is entering the Caribbean Sea. The convection with uh, with this one has been kind of up and down, up and down, up and down. That's typical for these tropical waves to do. We're still going to have to pay attention to it nevertheless. So this is what we have right here. The one in the eastern Atlantic has increased in its chance right here in the last 24 hours. It was at 10%, now it's at 30% within uh, in the next five days. We're going to go ahead and start with this one first. A broad and complex area of low pressure over the eastern tropics is produced in producing disorganized showers and thunderstorms. This interaction of this feature with an approaching tropical wave could support some gradual development of the system in the early and middle parts of next week while it moves slowly westward to the western, northwestward, excuse me, across the eastern central tropical Atlantic. That's because there's a bunch of wind shear in the area, so it's not in favorable conditions to develop right now. But right now is right now, and if we take a look at that wind shear map, once it gets closer to the lesser Antil uh, to the lesser Antilles right here, it'll have a better shot at developing. Just there's a bunch of wind shear coming from the Canary Islands that's kind of invading the main development region. That's why we're not seeing anything just popping off right now because all the other conditions are fine. It's just that wind shear that's invading. I'm not sure how long that's going to last, but we're going to have to pay attention to it as time continues to go on. 30% chance of formation in the next five days. This one really has no chance except for the, the change that this is starting to look more like it's going to be developing in the Western Caribbean Sea than the Eastern Caribbean Sea right here. So we're going to have to continue to monitor it. It is uh, coming in close to the Yucatan Peninsula. If it continues, it'll enter the Gulf of Mexico. And it's basically the boiling pot of the Atlantic Ocean right there. So yeah, we almost had a tropical depression, uh, potential tropical cyclone 4. It almost uh, developed just... it. Just the wind shear, unfortunately, just tore it apart. It just had it had probably a few more hours it could have developed, but the wind shear just invaded the Gulf. And that wind shear, by the way, is completely gone right here. There is a little bit invading parts of the northern uh, parts of the northern Gulf right there. We're gonna have to monitor it as time continues to go on. But as we see right here, there's a, a, a there's a trough of low pressure located in the Eastern Caribbean Sea, producing limited showers and thunderstorms. Environmental conditions could become more conducive for slow development of the system during the early to middle part of next week as it moves generally westward at 10 to 15 miles per hour across the central and northwestern Caribbean Sea. 20% chance of formation in the next five days, ladies and gentlemen. So these are two areas of interest we need to continue to watch. The global sea temperature is just once again, the, it, this thing is basically starting to enter, going to enter the boiling pot of the Gulf of the as the Gulf of Mexico. That's basically the warmest water in the entire Atlantic Ocean, right there. It's even the Western Caribbean Sea. Can we can kind of add into that? It's going to start entering that in the next few days. Something we need to continue to monitor right here. Same uh, thing with the Eastern System right there. So, with that being said, we're going to go ahead and pull up some model runs. Basically, what we're going to do is we're going to run the last four model runs of the GFS, and then we're going to run a, a couple of European model runs just to kind of cross-check all of this. Because I know a lot of people are saying the GFS is really trigger-happy and all that. I do agree with that. But I really can't dismiss what's going on when it comes to that because of basically the timing of this. This is 9 to 10 days out. And considering that we have another, we have an area of interest, we have two areas of interest right here. So we're going to run the last uh, f uh, four mile runs of that, and then we're going to run some European mile runs to cross-check it. So this is going to be a longer video than expected, so I do sorry. I am sorry if you're, you're expecting like a six-minute video. This will probably clock in around eight minutes, so please bear with me. So with that being said, this is where we're starting right here. This is the 18Z of the GFS from yesterday. And basically what this does, it establishes something near Jamaica. It kind of uh, meanders in the uh, Western Caribbean and then it either makes landfall in Cuba. I'm not sure, I don't think it does. And then it kind of meanders in the Gulf of Mexico and then it starts really ramping up in intensity and makes landfall in the Rio Grande Valley right here. Very close to the Texas-Mexico border, similar to where potential tropical cyclone 4 uh, made landfall. So 
That's the first model run we have right here. The second model run is also quite interesting when it comes to this as well. Uh, the, the, right here, the, we're t just taking a look at the Caribbean one right here. We'll pay attention to the Atlantic one in a little bit as time continues to go on. And this is the Zero Z, the GFS right here. This is the Caribbean system at, as it starts to develop. It kind of it produces its low pressure format. It starts really ramping up in intensity, either makes landfall or makes a very close press to, uh, uh, off the coast of the Yucatan Peninsula right there. And then it continues to bomb out really rapidly intensify. 933 millibars right here, ladies and gentlemen. And this is for September 4th right here. So this is nine and a half days out. So everyone needs to bear that in mind. I don't want anyone to panic or anything like that. I'm just showing you what the model runs are, uh, are showing right here. But anyway, yeah, 933 millibar hurricane according to this run of the GFS right here, making landfall around the Galveston area according to uh, this run right here. But these runs uh, this far out kind of have all are, are running all over the place with this point. So everyone needs to keep that in mind. It moves into Oklahoma, start finally dissipates. Then this system in the uh, in the Atlantic. It makes it either a very close uh, pr uh, brush towards or makes landfall on some of the lesser Antilles before moving for up to the north right here. And then that's pretty much the end of that in the Western uh, Western Atlantic right there. So that's the next mile run. Let's go ahead and go to the 6C. And this is where things start to get a little bit interesting, ladies and gentlemen. So let's go ahead and pull this up. Let's go ahead and uh, run this ru uh, run right here. We're going to pay attention to both storms right here. As you can see, this starts developing. The Caribbean system develops, makes a close brush towards Cuba. And then it starts to really rapidly intensify while at the same time this uh, system in the Atlantic starts developing. And this one gets down to 961. This one gets down to 953 millibars and makes landfall uh, in a similar place to where Hurricane Ida made landfall last year, which is kind of interesting right there right there to take a look at. But once again, this is nine days out. I want everyone to pay attention to, uh, to that. I want everyone to keep that in mind. Uh, these, um, these landfalls are basically, I'm noticing a more less area of interest right there, lesser uh, area cone right there. That's basically between Louisiana and the Rio Grande Valley. We're going to have to pay attention to it nevertheless. But this system right here uh, drops to 958, makes landfall on several of the lesser Antilles and potentially the Virgin Islands, and then moves off into up to the north where basically it's not going to be affecting land unless it hits Bermuda. So that's that's the 6Z. Let's go ahead and show you the 12Z real quickly because this is a very interesting run that I want everyone to, uh, to take a look at. This Caribbean system right here, it makes landfall or makes a close brush to the Yucatan Peninsula and it doubles down on what they were saying with when it comes to that Rio Grande uh, uh, Valley landfall right here from the 18Z. It really doubles down with it right here. This is 10 days out, so I want everyone to keep that in mind and things are subject to change. So that's pretty interesting what we're looking at right here. This system moves a little bit further to the north right there. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the European model right here. Let's go ahead and pull up the 0Z first and we'll pull up the 12Z of the previous run afterward to kind of, actually no, we'll pull up the 12Z of this one first and then we'll pull up the 0Z because this uh, the 12Z is really isn't picking up on anything right now. It does have this thing making uh, approaching the Lesser Antilles as a tropical storm right here. And then it kind of strengthens a little bit before approaching Puerto Rico 10 days out. So it, the European is kind of picking up on that Atlantic run more than the go potential Gulf uh, hurricane we have right here, which is an interesting development we have right there. The zero Z though is where things get really interesting. And I'll show you what I'm talking about because this is the zero Z right here. It strengthens to a tropical storm, a strong tropical storm. Uh, potentially makes landfall on parts of the Leeward Islands as well as the uh, Virgin Islands right there, moves and impacts the Greater Antilles right there and strengthens potentially into a hurricane 10 days out right there. So the Europeans starting to kind of cross-check that GFS run when it comes to that, um, excuse me, when it comes to that uh, run in the Atlantic. They're not finding anything in the Gulf yet. We're going to have to pay attention as time goes on. The reason I'm showing you all these models is because the GFS has really been exploding in the amount of hurricane models it's been having over the last few days or so. It's been quite consistent, and I've been paying attention to it, and it's not it's normally something I would dismiss, but because we have an area of interest in the, Atl in the Caribbean Sea, excuse me, 
And considering the fact that this is like nine days out now, is something I'm still paying attention to, if you know what I mean. So that's basically the latest we have when it comes to these model runs right here. I know this was a longer than expected video right here, so I do apologize for that, but I wanted to get as much information out to you as I possibly could. But with that being said, we're gonna go ahead and wrap up this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Be sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you are new. It helps me out and helps me make more videos like these. The goal of this channel is to get more people engaged with weather. But with that being said, have a wonderful day. My Hurricane Harvey documentary is coming out tomorrow at 2 p.m. Central Daylight Time, so please be sure you do not miss it. And with that being said, stay safe.